Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of Databases with Unity 5 and in this episode we're finally going to learn how to make a PHP file to get our information from our database. So let's begin. First of all, we need to open our computer and go to where we install XAMPP. That should be in the local disk C for me, at least. And then we have to find a folder called htdocs. So this is actually the files that are being hosted by your server to to put it in a way, okay? So what we want to do here is open a new folder and we're going to call it a cool YouTube RPG. And I'm gonna add some underscores because this will be as a website. I mean, it will be like a way, um, like part of the URL that we're going to type later on. So, and here, we are going to create a new text document, okay? So this is going to be called itemsdata.php and we're going to edit this with notepad++. If you don't have notepad++, you can use any other scripting editor like uh, Eclipse and if you don't have Eclipse, you can of course go to Google and download notepad++. It's very very convenient software that we're going to use so just go ahead and download it and once you're ready you can keep moving on with us so we have items data php and now we're going to start learning some php so this is basically another programming language and what we do to say that we're using php we have to use our tags so the first thing we do is type this and finish with that. So this here we're saying we are using PHP. Whatever is inside here is PHP code. So the next thing we have we want to do is create some variables. And to declare variables in PHP, we don't need to set what kind of data type it is. We just type the dollar sign. And then we not, and we Use the, we type the name of the variable. So first of all, I'm going to create a server name variable and I'm just going to set it equals to localhost because we're using our localhost. Next, I'm going to create a username. And the username, if you remember from last episode, was root. Then a password. And finally, the name of your database. So I'm just going to type db name. And the database name we used was cool YouTube RPG. And it's going to be all lowercase letters, no matter what. So just keep it like that. And after we declare these variables, these variables will be used to set the connection with the server. Before we continue, I'm going to, because I realized and we have a little error here. It's not an error, but I saved this as a txt file. We need to change that, so we're going to save as. And because it got the .php, I thought it was going to change the extension, but we're just going to call it items data. And here, we're going to find PHP and just gonna save it like that. So you see now we have some highlighting and some other cool stuff. So let's continue. Now we're going to make the connection. And for that, we need to make a new variable. I'm just go call it connection or con or whatever. And I'm going to set it to a new MySQL I. And this is a function that has four parameters. So we're just going to call those parameters server name, username. password and db name. So this is going to initialize the connection using these four variables. And to make it more professional, we can check connection. We're just going to check if there is no connection. We're going to ask PHP to die. 
and give us the following message connection failed and concaten concatenation here is just dot so we dot and we concatenate my SQL I underscore connect underscore error like that so we're going to get what is the error causing the connection to fail before we continue we just want to try this so we're going to echo and what echo means is that you would just want to display some text or some information in the in the screen so for now we're just going to do an else echo and what we want to echo is a string connection success to try this we're just going to open our browser and go to local host slash and name of the folder was cool yt rpg localhost slash cool yt rpg slash items data dot php yeah we have connection success so we are actually now connected to our database so what we want to do now is select some information from our database. So I'm going to, to delete this because we already tested it. So after we check the connection, we want to create a query. And what a query is, is very simple. Just follow along with this. It's a string and we're going to say, select the ID, the name, the type, and the cost from the table called items. If you remember, in our in our table we have in our database we have a table called items and the name of the columns is ID name type and cost that's what we want to select from that table then we want to create a variable called result and we're going to set it as this my SQL I query and as the parameter we're going to insert this string here and that's the second parameter and the first parameter is the connection so we have to give it the connection information so it can connect and then send this query to the server after that we want to create an if statement and if my SQL I and number of rows of this query result is greater than zero we'll do the following we're going to show the data for each row so we need to use a while loop and for that while loop we're going to create a row for each row in our table right so we use this function my SQL I fetch associated result okay so we just use this query variable here to create an array this will become an array so then we can select each value from that array so the last thing is create a display message echo this is what we're going to show on the screen and we're just going to format it a bit I'm going to say ID and then I'm going to show the ID of the row and remember uh, we have two rows so then I'm going to concatenate and here, here, remember row is an array, so we're just going to get the ID from that array. It's an associative array. And then same for the name, same for the type, and same for the cost. And at the end, we want to add this. What BR means is actually a break, and we would just skip a line, so it will show the next line on the following line so it's just like pressing enter so now we can try this and if we try it we have an error you save this oh sorry why do I have this twice I was copying pasting to make it faster but anyway delete that and <laughs> you don't need that you just need this one and let's try it 
identify variable result. Okay, so we mistype result, not reset, but result. Let's try it again. And we have it. ID 1, name health potion, type consumable cost 50. ID 2, name iron sword, type. We can format it even better, but that's how we get some information on the screen. So that this is a string, actually. This is just a string. And what we want to do from Unity is get to this website here. This is actually a URL. We want to go to this URL and fetch all the text we have on the screen. And inside Unity, we're going to format it and make it into arrays of data and integers, strings, etc. Um, so we're going to make a little test here in I'm on the items table. I'm going to insert. I'm going to create any item. Just going to call it skull miscellaneous and the cost may be 25. So go. I created this. And now if I refresh, I have another item in my database. So this is how we can create items. So then we can use this information to make our items inside the game. So now we're going to learn how to make the c -sharp script to get this information into Unity. But our time is over, uh, so I'm going to see you guys on the next episode where we're going to learn all of that. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you have any questions, remember to put it on the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!